There seems to be no escape. But this mantis has a surprising line in self-defense. Kung Fu, praying mantis style. Of course, it's all bluff, trying to look bigger and confuse its enemy. But it's got away with it. Well, this the is... point is, all the matter that goes there at a primitive level has some sense of really low-level self-awareness. Yeah, why well, believe and, that? Say again? Why well, believe that? Because that's the conservation going on. What? Well, okay, if, 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 if that's the conclusion of your conservation principle, why accept the conservation principle? I, I just don't understand. Because if you don't believe in conservation, you believe in spontaneous generation. I mean, this is a general thing it's with regards to anything in reality. But uh, what do you mean? I mean? A bunch of things in the world just, you know, begin to exist. I, I don't know. Well, so when you put a bunch of bricks to together, them. does that spontaneously create a wall? No, that's conservation of matter. But it's not so, conservation of wall. Oh, the form changes. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so by cons by spontaneous, you mean like creation ex nihilo, right? The characteristic would be created from something into nothing in spontaneous generation. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I don't believe that. Do any of you guys believe in that? No. No. Right. Right. I don't believe in that either. I'm saying that's why we have to have no. conservation. <laughs> Has so, echolocation always always existed? Uh, how is this relevant to the topic? Just answer the question, please. I, I don't want to waste my attention on something that's irrelevant. I've learned You'll see the relevant thing dude, once he goes through the line questions. No, no, dude, no, no, dude, no, no, dude no, no, we, we let you relevant. hold on. We let you talk about Gaussian, Gaussian distributions, right? <laughs> come, come on, man. We let you ramble more than anybody else. Come on, dude. Just answer the question. Come on. You're talking about the capability that bats and dolphins have. Yes. <laughs> that that ability exists. What more do you want to talk about? Did that always exist? No. Okay. But you're saying self-awareness has always existed? At a very basic level, yes. Has echolocation always existed at a very basic level? No, because auditory well, physical capabilities him, are not the same. Dichotomy. So according to him, it's spontaneously generated out of nothing since it didn't always exist. What? Slap the fuck down, bitch! Do you, do you see the analogy how, Floyd's making? That's not how physical capabilities come about. That's a totally different thing. You don't think that awareness is a physical capability? Okay, so if you remember when I was talking about it, I was talking about the internal-external bridge. Right? The only thing is that how you know something versus how you explain it to somebody. So when I'm talking about the internal-external bridge, I'm talking about how we come to a realization through our senses. Does that make sense? How's that relevant to what he just said? We were talking about the conservation of self-awareness. That's what self We're not talking about how you know. That's epistemology. We're talking about the ontology. You're talking about the structure? Do you know the difference between epistemology and ontology? Justified true beliefs versus structure. What do you mean by structure? We're talking about the relationships on... Well, versus, it's just how you know something versus what's the case. Okay, we can run with that. So we're not talking about how you know somebody has senses or how you know that uh, there's like a location, right? We're talking about the actual uh, structure, I guess you want, you're the word you're using, structure of uh, echolocation. But you're saying that it's spontaneously generated because there was not always existing. Okay, let me explain that. What I see now, there what's the difference is... between echolocation coming about and uh, sensory perception? Right. So I would say that echolocation is a form of this, but it is not this itself. 
what we're talking in there, what we're talking about there is how eardrums function. We're talking about how lungs function. We're talking about the broadcasting of sound waves. Right, we're talking about all the physical attributes as to how echolocation processes. No, but you believe that echolocation is a qualia, right? After you get all the physical stuff, you get the qualia, the dolphin in the back gets the qualia of the echolocation, right? That would be a form of how self-awareness functions, correct? Are we on the same page here? So wait, it didn't always exist. Matter had to be wait, you transformed. Think that, wait, you, you think the bats are self-aware? What the fuck? On a, on a, on a primitive on a level, level, yes. Yes. Wait, he thinks, he thinks everything is self. He thinks everything is self-aware. What the fuck? You think like a bee is self-aware? Oh my god. He thinks a rock is self-aware. Oh my god! Wait, what does self-aware mean? So I was talking about the internal-external bridge before. So a rock has internality? Some sort of internal beliefs? Wait, define self-aware. So, oh, so... I, just, uh, for the, I don't know how many times... Are, are, are you willing to acknowledge that there's different levels of personhood? Right. Does it self-awareness entail, like, beliefs... All right, so why not... Why not go bottom-up rather than top-down? Why not your God concept be very primitive to where it's has very little personhood at all. You're claiming you're claiming we need to start with like the, the ultimate person, all all knowing and all powerful. Why not go the other end? I mean, if you can interpret it that way, if you want, I don't really see why we have to go one way or the other. Well, okay, then, then you're then the origin of the physical universe um, would be. I have almost no personhood at all where God is traditionally defined as a person. And and according to Aquinas, the the uh, greatest person ever to be conceived. Mm. So here we're going in the total opposite direction. I should be clear that I'm a Platonist, not an Aristotelian. So, yeah. I have some qualms with Aquinas. I think his morals and his ethics make a lot of sense, and I think that his morals and ethics can also be realized from Platonic framework. So, why well, well, just reduce your God to a form lower than an amoeba or even well, a rock? Well, our goal here is to identify how God is everywhere. Okay. So, what we're saying is that. Within our world, you know, God exists within me, God exists within you, God exists within all of the primitive create, uh, creatures of the world, it exists within all inanimate matter, and whatever forms of consciousness happen to, you know, progress into the future, God will exist there as well. Does that seem sensible to you? No. I don't understand what you said. Okay. What I'm saying here is that we have this internal external bridge by which we can be aware of what's going on through our sensibilities. Okay? This bridge cannot spontaneously generate. Therefore, it must be conserved. Yeah, I don't understand. You have to stop. You have to back up there. I don't even understand that part. An internal external bridge of what? Of sensibility. It's how we look through our what eyes. How we hear. So how we look through our eyes, how we hear through our ears, how we smell through our nose, etc. Like what it's reducible to? There is a process by which phenomena in the world stimulate us and we come to a realization of what is going on. So there's a bridge between the process, you're saying? I'm saying the bridge is the process. It's like what what happens outside of you, and then you becoming aware of what happens outside of you, right? So the, wait, the internal, like the internal, is what's going on inside your body. Is that what you're saying? Well, we're talking philosophically here. So what goes on within your mind? So not what's going on in your body. So not like your like the occipital lobe, the occipital lobes in your brain for the sight thing. Like um, it's not that you're not talking about that. The physical part. I thought you just said it was the physical part. I I would put it this way. If you want if you want to get into neurology, wait, is, wait, is, sir, is the internal part the physical part or is it the mind? 
we're talking philosophically, so we're talking about the mind. Oh, so you were what? You misspoke when you said it was the physical part? Did I not just ask this guy, what does the internal part mean? And he said it's the process that's going on, like the... Uh -huh. It's not your body? You're not saying what's going on in the body? This is a very complex question. Do you, do you want to get into this? I mean, we can. Is it physical would... or not? Is if it the you physical want to say it's processes physical. or not? Is it the physical processes or not, sir? It, if you want to say it's physical, I'll, I'll run with this. I would say okay, this so applies. It's not the mind, because surely you don't believe the mind is physical, correct? I'm saying this question is up in the air. So you don't know what you mean. You don't. You don't know when you say internal, and you can't tell us what you mean. You don't. You don't know if you're talking about the physical processes, like in the brain and in the body, uh, or mean, if you're talking about the mind you don't know which one you're talking about but I'm it's saying, one of those two saying, are you sure it's one of those two i'm saying our understanding of the mind at this point in time is underdetermined we do not have sufficient understanding to get this done correctly so what i'm doing is being okay, open-minded so towards the possibility you can't tell us what it is and we don't know what it is and that's the internal part okay so mm -hmm. you're saying that there's a bridge between what we don't know and we can't define uh and the external part now what's the external part the phenomena. Oh, wait, what's the bridge? The conversion of stimulus from the phenomena to that internal part of us. Okay, so there's something that we don't know what it is. You can't tell us, you can't define it. And there's a bridge connecting that to the external objects? Mm hmm Okay, we'll go on with the next part. Okay, this bridge has to be conserved. What does that mean? Not what does that mean? It means that this is a property that exists within the world and is never created or destroyed. It simply forever is. What's the argument for that? Because if it's not that, then it would be spontaneously generated. What's the argument for that dichotomy? Well, if it's neither of those two things, what would it be? Wait, I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to provide. I don't know what it could be. But it could be like they said a gradual gradual processes. Right. We talked about evolution before and I was saying that self awareness can exist on really primitive levels and then it gets reformatted into higher and higher levels. Yeah, so what? So that's an understandable paradigm like panpsychism. Yeah, oh yeah, panpsychism. That's another thing. That would be another option, right? Right, and I, that would I'm be okay a third with that. I just want to play with that. The dichotomy. Do you want to play with panpsychism? Wait, I just provided a third option. So do you admit that the dichotomy was false? I'm saying that panpsychism makes sense with the internal external bridge. It makes sense? Mm hmm What? I don't understand how that's a response to what, my question. I just asked you, was it a false dichotomy or not? So the three options at hand. Oh, so now that... there's three options. Wait, sir. Now you're contradicting yourself because you said there was only two. Well, we were discussing panpsychism, and in my mind, panpsychism. Sir, is, is there the two or three options, sir? Is there two or three? Yes. I can think of even more. Yes isn't a fucking answer. It's two or three. Which one? I wasn't that an answer. Look, listen very carefully to what you were saying. Sir! Yes, Sir! Yes, ma'am. Two or three? Two yes. or three? Yes. He, a fucking, this is my, this guy is my new favorite person. He's been trolling us this whole time. This is fucking amazing. This is gold. Dude, we, God we loves you. We're team together. Dude, God just loves you. We're on a team together. It's not gold, though. <laughs> is he really trolling, though? Gold is something people will pay for. I, I think he is trolling at this point. I feel like he said not. two or three. Two, I t said two or three multiple times, and he said yes. He want because you know what, guys? He doesn't know me, so you know when I start, I started. He thought that I was like actually getting angry and upset. You know when I scream and people that don't know me actually think like I'm upset. He thought he was about to make me powder keg, so he inadvertently revealed that he was trolling by then being ex like an extre extremely um like giving extremely annoying responses but when i kept screaming two or three sir two or three he thought i was about to potter cake so he kept saying yes 
Your mask I, is ripped off. I'm really not trying to troll here, but do you want to continue? Gaza, I honestly like don't think he's trolling. I know I might be the like. You wait. You're telling me that you believe this guy believes that yes is an answer to the question. Do you believe two or three? Uh, I believe that in his mind, he thinks that giving that answer might have uh, continued the conversation. See, you want me to clarify the sentence? I, mean, I can clarify if you want. Yeah, my, my money's on your trolling us, honestly. I honestly, I, like, no. I, I will. No, no. He said he's a Catholic. I think no. he's just an atheist that trolls atheists. Oh my god, you're fucking amazing. No, like he might, he, he might, just, actually, he might like actually, he, he, he might like actually, me. he might actually be a Christian. Like, but I think he definitely is trolling. The thing about the Gaussian distributions really like cued me into it. Like, there's no way you said that as like a genuine response. Like, that was just. But uh, even look at his status. Idealism is extremely practical. Pragmatism is utopian terrorism. But you're, you're an idealist. Have you looked at the link? You're an idealist, right? I'm an ethical idealist, yeah. And it's the practical. Words I'm, well, okay. Understand and pragmatism words is terrorism. <laughs> I'll say that this guy's being serious, Sammy. I honestly think he's being serious. What's ethical, Nikeless? Like, I don't think I'm confident enough to put money on it, but, like, I'm pretty fucking sure. Oh, I'll put money on it. He's serious. I'll put money on it. How would we resolve it? I would would put money that he's serious. Mm Mm-hmm. He doesn't right. have what any do money to put down psycho- anyway. Okay, so what do you think the psychology was when I was saying, sir, was it a false dichotomy? I just presented a third option. Is there two options? And he conceded. And then I said, so is there two options or three options? And he just kept saying yes. Zach spends all of his that. money on steroids. Sophia spends all of her money on Orson. Like, you guys have no fucking money. Don't be bad. <laughs> No, guys, the guys who think he's serious, examine the psychology there right now. Ask him. He presented a dichotomy. I presented a third option. He conceded that that was a third option. So I was like, so is there two or three options, sir? Because you said there was a dichotomy. And he kept saying yes. And I was screaming two or three. And he kept saying yes. Ask him. Well, could it not be, I mean, could it not be said that he was, I mean, I I think it's a nonsensical answer, but maybe I'm being charitable. He was saying, yes, there could be two or three instead of saying like it's two or it's three. He was acknowledging Sir, that there could is be. Is there two options or is there three options? Wait, are you talking to me now? Yes. What's your name? Kantian? You want us to call you that? Uh, you can just call me MJ if you want. MJ. No, Mary Jane is already MJ. You can't be MJ. This is not the time for simping. MJ is fine. Um, answer the question, please. Okay, so your question was, is there two or is there three? Yeah, options, yeah. Uh, I would say I'm not sure which number there are, or which number there is. <laughs> so that's why I was saying... Not, you're, so you're no longer asserting that it's a dichotomy. I'm saying that it could be two or it could be three. It is not sure which... Not clear which are one you, it is. Are you asserting that there's it's a dichotomy? The spontaneous generation or the other thing? Uh, well, he said he said he's agnostic, <laughs> but well, if he's if he's not if he's no longer asserting that as a dichotomy, then isn't that necessary for his argument? Isn't that like one of the premises? I, I understand your point, right? I mean, he, if he's already conceiving of, of these three possibilities, what? Why is he agnostic on that? My concern here is a matter of language. It's not a matter of ideas. It depends on how you interpret uh, panpsychism and conservation being the same or different. Gobbledygook. I mean, do I mean you um, what, what about the option of like deterministic uh, materialism or whatever? Uh, you still have to explain how that process works. That's this is why, why I've been why referring is, wait, to. Wait, wait, wait. Why is the well. determinist? Why would they have to account for that? Just because you can't account for something on your view doesn't mean that you have to accept another person's view. Well, well I mean, what I'm, what I'm talking about is physical, pro- mindless physical processes acting and uh, creating effects, right? You're talking about emergence? Yeah, that's, that could be a part of it. 
I mean, that's entailed by it, but, I, but, but yeah, what my idea is broader in scope than that. Okay. I, I don't see why there's a uh, dichotomy here because even if we have emergence, what's really happening is that the primitive self-awareness that permeates the world is simply being uh, reformatted into faculties that make sense. Okay, here, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> wait, wait. I'll explain my point in one sentence. What, what I'm saying is that, okay, yes, it's not even a dichotomy. There's like at least four options that I can think of. Okay, what's the fourth option? The, the one I fucking told you, motherfucker. Oh, well, I didn't. I didn't see it really being an option because I thought that these would be the processes by which your determinism happens. Um, I should be clear about something. I'm saying self-awareness on purpose. Okay, I'm not saying free will. I'm not saying fate. Okay, we're simply discussing God here. And some people believe in a fatalistic God. So just understand. Fatalistic, like fatalism? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, some people do that's believe like, that there is no such thing as free will while God exists. Like that's like a total, uh, another issue not related to any of this. It's not even remotely related to this. Why are you bringing up fatalism? Well, I mean, they were bringing up determinism before. Are you saying there's a difference between fatalism and determinism? Yeah, I do think that there's a difference. Um, can you elaborate? <laughs> yeah, yeah determinism is simply that all, uh, all events were caused by antecedent conditions. Fatalism mm -hmm. is, regardless of what any event is, what uh, what occurs, uh, we're going. You're going to end up in the same future. So whether you throw the ball up or you throw the ball down, uh, you're still going to get married to Bob. Oh, you mean like Morton's fork? What? And you're talking about Morton's fork there. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Morton's fork is that if you start at X and you take path A or B, you still end up at point Y. It seems like now you're just trying to show off what you know. I was just getting clarification. I'm sorry. It impressed me. Betterment. I just, uh, I don't. I, I want to see this guy in action in like another server, though. Like, imagine him going you know, like, to talk to Darth or like going to the Canadian Catholic server and saying this shit. Well, you, you saw I dealt with Darth, right? No. Uh, Is there a recording? Uh, yeah, I posted the video in your other server. In your other server. Oh my god, I would love to see that. Can you PM me the link? Uh, let me see. What, uh, what, give me your perception of the interaction. How long is the video? I hope it's long. Uh, it's, how long is it? Um, to be honest, there is a little bit of a buildup that's required. Um, it gives pre, so what, uh, what's the end result? Context. context. The end result yeah, is he ends up uh, he, he ends up muting me because he doesn't know how to explain himself. <laughs> well, he ends up muting any of everybody there. Yeah. So, but did you make the troll list yet? Um, um, what happened was a couple moderators on his server actually thought that Darth didn't give me a fair shake, and they unmuted me right away. Oh, wow! Yeah, he stirred up mod, mod drama. That's amazing. This guy is. Oh my god! This guy's my new best friend. We gotta go on another server together, sir. I'll off, I'll argue for Catholicism with you. Well, that's a complicated issue. We haven't even gotten to the point of God yet, and Catholicism is a whole other level. Well, let's grant God. Let's got. Let's grant the existence of a God. Uh, God created the universe. Now, how do you get from that to Catholicism? So, the essence of Catholicism is understanding universal grace, which is basically that each and every person's self-awareness deserves recognition, and that we don't know in advance of experience how grace is going to manifest itself in the world, so therefore we have to give it the benefit of the doubt and treat it with respect. Um, grace? Does this make sense to you? No, what's grace? Grace is... Um, so take your self-awareness and then combine that with what is informally within your control. Some people call this intuition, but everyone does. This is why I brought up the music playing example. I would call the ability so, to improvise without wait, thinking. Wait, 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 wait. What's self-awareness? Because I think when you say self-awareness, you don't mean what anybody else means. So you got, because I heard that you think everything is self-aware. So you got to tell me what you even mean. Well, yeah, I mean, I was saying that self-awareness can exist on multiple levels. So, you know, Define rocks can have self-awareness, but it would be extremely definition. primitive. Say What's again? the definition? What's the definition? 
of self-awareness. Part of it is that internal external bridge. The other part of it is being able to exercise energy over time with your attention. If you remember earlier, I was trying to talk with your father about the difference between triangles and bachelors. This is a big part of that. You can exercise energy over time via attention to define a triangle. (laughs) You were trying to talk to my father. Oh, I thought you put him on. Like, didn't you put him on your account? Wait, do you think Josh is your dad? Oh, he's talking about my boyfriend. (laughs) I thought you said your dad. (laughs) <laughs> no, it was like it was like, sir, you're obscuring the issue, so I had to put my father on. <laughs> That's hilarious. Know. Josh is gonna like that though. <laughs> no, he was there, he heard that. Wait, I thought that we when you said internal bridge that you didn't know what that you couldn't tell us what that was. You were just saying it's self awareness and something else, but you can't just say the bridge is self awareness and self awareness is the bridge because I still don't have any idea what that means, sir. Yeah, the uh, internal external bridge is only part of self awareness. The other part of it is what I just said. It's the no, wait, <coughs> exercise of energy over time. Part. I don't understand the first part because you when I asked you what the bridge is, you just said it's self awareness. Okay, let, so let's, I don't know uh, what that means. Wait, you say the bridge is self awareness, and self awareness is the bridge, and that's the first part of self awareness. I don't understand. Okay. But but plus, there's a contradiction there, right? Because you said that self awareness is the bridge, and it's the external thing. But before, when I asked you, well, what's the internal thing? You said it was self awareness. So surely the self awareness isn't the internal and the external um, thing. Maybe we had some communication issues there. But I would just say that again. Th- Self-awareness is the internal-external bridge plus the ability to exercise that means. energy. Sir, you have to tell me what the, I don't know what that means. Okay, so do we need to look you, at all three words? Because what is the internal-external bridge thing? You just said it's self-awareness. Okay, so the internal side is what goes on within your mind, which we are not clear about at this point in time. The external side is the phenomena, which stimulates us. And the bridge is so how you that, think that self-awareness includes the external object. So, like, if I stub my toe on a chair, right, and that causes me pain, then the chair is part, then half of the self-awareness is the chair itself? Mm, no. Um, so, wait, is it the object or is it not? You said it's the phenomenon, or the, um, did you say the phenomenon or the noumena? Hi, Brenda. Oh, okay, so you're actually familiar. Okay, so this, I guess you would call the noumena. Okay, so you're saying that the chair, the chair is the noumena, and that is or is not part of the self-awareness? The noumena is what gets bridged with our internal mind. This is why it's called the... In, the, the or, are you asking what is the bridge itself? So I'm asking you, is that because I was asking you to define self-awareness. And you said that it's, is it the chair or is it not the chair? Is part of the self-awareness the chair? The noumena of the chair. The noumena of the chair is the external part of the bridge. The noumena of the chair? Is the external part of the bridge. What is that, the noumena of the chair means? I thought that the noumena would just be the chair itself. Mm, I would say the phenomena is the chair itself. Wait, you think that the chair is not, uh, it doesn't have mass? <laughs> yes, it has mass. We're Wait, talking about the stimulus. It's a phenomenon and it has mass. Do so you think that phenomenon has mass? Correct. Phenomena is the experience. Uh, phenomena is the thing. We experience things, but noumena is what we get from the experience. Oh, wait, maybe I had it backwards. I thought that the noumena was the object and the phenomenon was the uh, experience of the object. Do you want me to go over Kant's uh, distinctions? Yeah, do I have it backwards? Is that correct? I think you do. Yeah, noumena is like mind. Phenomena is like the thing. Oh, okay, sorry, I had it backwards. So, oh, so maybe I can understand a little better. So, is the bridge... Like, the curtain that's between the phenomena and the noumena, is that what you're trying to say? 
Uh, I don't know if I'd use bridge as a word, but you can use it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you used you it use, multiple you times. Use bridge. Uh, I thought you just used the word curtain. She said, "No, she said bridge." Oh, come on, you also, you, you all, you also said, and then you said you wouldn't say bridge. Uh, that was a, all right, my bad. My bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> oh, my, my, my oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no, you had to be so, come on, come on, I dude. I thought she was saying You had to be trolling. Come on, man. You had to be trolling there. So Godless said curtain, correct? You had no expectation you were gonna get away with that. Come on, dude. No, I mean No, she said me. see no, it was again because he thought I was getting close to powder kegging again. He didn't realize that I'm very, very calm, sir. Right. I'm very, very calm. Well, I, I don't want to make it powder keg. We have, sir, we have antibodies in this server to this kind of trolling. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you powder keg. I thought we were having a serious conversation. <laughs> did, did, didn't she say, Kurt? <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. Okay, so you were arguing for God before we started debating, you know, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, right? Mm hmm So... I mean, can we get back to the gut argument, or does it really hinge on this? I mean, I, I would like to progress. <laughs> so the point is, when you have conservation of self-awareness, this tells us that there is an omnipresent uh, quality going on. And when we have the transcendental side, there is an all-knowing quality going on. So if you have this ever-present quality, and you have this all-knowing quality, that means you could literally do anything in that world, which gives you the all-powerful quality. And when we define God, we define oh, yeah. it as having those three qualities. So there you go. That's like a like a trinity of non sequiturs. Well, okay. If <clears throat> if you exist somewhere and you know everything that can be done somewhere, right? That means it is within your potential to do anything in that location, correct? No. <laughs> how, does, how does that follow? Well, to do something, you have to be in the objects that are doing things, correct? Say, say man, even if I granted you that, uh, you know, if I knew everything, that doesn't, it doesn't fall from that that I can do anything. <laughs> or that I can do everything, sorry. Uh, I'm really left scratching my head here. I don't see what... Okay, so let's say that you have an action. Now, an action has a continuum of stages, correct? So if you're running, like you're moving your legs in a series of stages? Um, right. uh, okay. Fine, I'm going I'm to grant you that. Keep going. Okay. Now, you exist throughout your legs. You exist within the blood vessels, the muscles, the nerves, etc., correct? Um, I'm, I'm going to say yes and add to it. Keep going. Yeah, so you know all of the stages of running. You exist within the faculties of what it takes to run. So therefore, it is within your capability to run with your legs. <laughs> Seems simple enough. But so back to uh, God's, or, you know, sorry, I'm um, omnipotence. Okay. So we have this quality that exists throughout the entirety of the world. And we have these transcendental properties that know everything about what is going on in the world. Right? So therefore, this quality that can do that, this quality that exists throughout all this stuff, which is associated with this knowledge of everything out there, can do whatever it will. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the part I object to making the leap from so, A to B. So, what's your objection? That um, you know, it's possible for it, you know, to be everywhere, right, and know everything, and uh, mm -hmm. at the same time, not being able to do everything. Well, what more would be required to do something or do anything? I, I don't see what what's missing. I'm trying to like see what's the missing puzzle piece to the puzzle. Well, I mean, making the, uh, you, you, you go ahead, Detroit. What? Well, why would knowing something enable you to do anything, let alone everything? 
Well, it's not that alone. It's that combined with the fact that you exist everywhere. I'm not sure that. I mean, is, does that mean it, it's coexisting with all the other things that exist? Or is it just everything that exists? Is it? Well, everything that exists is it. Right. So you just you just have a label on, on reality then that you're calling it this thing, whatever you're labeling it up. Self-awareness permeates reality, yes. Um, I mean, I'm not sure how you got there, but I mean, let's, let's just grant that. I mean, I would deny that, but sure. Okay. And okay, so everything that happens is something it does. All right. Self-awareness synthesized with the transcendental knowledge creates this all-powerful quality. So what makes it all powerful? Why is it that synthesis, whatever that means, create, make it all powerful? Well, that's, that's why I gave the running analogy earlier. I wasn't here I mean, for that. Uh, so I, I was saying that when an event takes place, there is a continuum of stages. Now, if you know everything, then you know that entire continuum of stages. Now, if we take running, you know the entire continuum of what it takes to run, and then you exist within your legs. So, you know, your, your legs, they compose your nerves, your muscles, your, your blood vessels. So what else do you need to run? <laughs> Wait, uh, is all you're saying that if there's um, some part of the that has self-awareness and knows what it means to run and has the parts necessary um, for running. Um, huh? If all you're saying that that sort of thing can run, uh, okay, so so what? Sure. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't mean it can tie its shoes, for example. Okay, but that's the point here. I mean, we were. this analogy was a hypothetical. You know, it was just talking about the capability of running. And the categorical that we're talking about we're talking about God literally occupying everything. So it is mm -hmm. the legs, it is the shoes, it is the hands, it is the eyes, and everything else in the entirety of the world. So what's missing? Um, well, normally, for when we're talking about omnipotence, right, all, all power, we're not just talking about um, the power to do the things that in fact occur in the world, right? Certainly, we mean something stronger than that, right? Uh, I guess my question would be, what do you mean by omnipotence? He th he means that God can, he, he's, this is what he said earlier, he can clarify if I misunderstood the view that omnipotence is the ability to do anything, even the impossible things, including contradictions, and God can make a squared circle if he desired to do so. Okay, so that's even stronger than I was thinking. So... 